Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial system. Now, this problem was inspired by a problem that uh, is from Saratov Math Olympiads, which is a region in Russia. Uh, it was a parametric equation, and I know some of you guys like the parametric equations, but they're more complicated and just, you know, more, more involved. Uh, so instead of the 3, 4, 5, we have the A, B, C, and you have to solve depending on the values of A, which makes it a parametric system. Anyways, so I kind of simplify the problem a little bit, but that's my inspiration. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to divide both sides by x, y, z. First of all, notice that if x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0, you're going to get 0 equals 0. So that is going to give you some solutions, right? Obviously. So can we safely say that they can all be 0? Well, they don't have to be, but if you look at the second equation, so from the first equation, suppose x and y are 0 and z is anything, uh, that would satisfy the first equation, right? 0 equals 0. And from the second equation, though, if um, y is 0 but z is not necessarily 0, they're going to get z squared equals 0. That it kind of also implies that z is equal to 0, so on and so forth. So those are like the trivial cases. We're not really going to deal with them. I want to show you something less trivial. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to assume that x, y, z are all different from 0. And I can say that suppose x, y, z does not equal 0. This means that none of them can be 0. Now I'm going to divide both sides by x, y, z, and I'm going to do this for each equation. So the first equation gives me the following. x squared plus y squared divided by x, y, z is equal to 3, right? And that is going to give me, actually I could probably just split them up and then set it equal to 3. So this is going to give me x over y, z plus y over x, z. And as you know, this is going to equal 3. Great. Let's go ahead and do it for the other equations as well. y squared plus z squared divided by x, y, z is equal to y over x, z plus z over x, y. And as you know, that is going to equal 4 from the second equation. And then if you do it again, x squared plus z squared divided by x, y, z. Remember, x, y, z does not equal 0, so we can do it. x over y, z plus z over x, y. And that is going to equal 5. 3, 4, 5, the Pythagorean triangle, right? Awesome. Now, to solve this as a system, I'm going to use substitution. And I want to uh, name these something to make it a little easier on ourselves. So let's go ahead and call this A. Let's call this B. And let's call this C. And from here, we get a really nice, really nice system, which is A plus B is equal to 3. B plus C is equal to 4 and a plus c is equal to 5. Now, to solve this system, we have different methods. First method, for example, you can add the first two equations. That's going to give you a plus c plus 2b, or not 2b. That's a 7. We already know that a plus c is equal to 5. From here, you can find b equals 1, and by substitution, you can find everything else. That's one way to approach it. But I'm going to use a different approach, which is my, kind of like my second method for this part. You can just add all the equations. That's going to give you 2 times the quantity a plus b plus c equals 12. From here, we get a plus b plus c is equal to 6. Now, I know they are sum, and I know that a plus b is equal to 3. So from here, we can pretty much find everything, right? So a becomes 3, b becomes 2, and c becomes 1. Because think about it. a plus b is equal to 3, so 3 plus c is equal to 6. From there, wait. Wait a minute, what am I talking about? I think I kind of messed it up. Let's double check this. Okay, great. So a plus b plus c is equal to 6, and a plus b is equal to 3, so c should be 3. There you go. Since c is 3, b is 1, and a is going to be 2. Okay, great. That is the correct way to write it. So uh, a is equal to 2, b is equal to 1, and c is equal to 3. Okay, cool. Now, what am I going to do with these values? Well, we're going to back substitute those. What is a, right? A is x over y, z. So if x over y, z is equal to a, that means it's 2, and y over x, z is b, which is 1, why don't we just take this x over y, z and y over x, z, and why don't we multiply them? Now notice what happens when you multiply these two things. The y cancels out and the x cancels out, and you end up with 1 over z squared. 
But notice that x over yz is a and y over xc is b, and a times b is equal to 2. From here you get z squared is equal to 1 half, and z just becomes plus minus root 2 over 2. It's normally 1 over root 2, but I just simplified it or rationalized it, and I got root 2 over 2 from here. All right? Cool. So that is my z value. I got the z value. Let's go ahead and find the other one. So, for example, if I take x over y, z, and multiply it by z over x, y, now this gives me the following. z cancels out, x cancels out, and I end up with 1 over y squared. But notice that we're multiplying a and c. So a times c is equal to 6. And from here we get y squared equals 1 over 6, which means y equals plus minus 1 over root 6, which can be written as root 6 over 6. Awesome. That is going to be my y value. And how do you find the x value? You multiply b and c together. What is b? y over xz. And c is z over xy. Here, y cancels out, z cancels out, and we end up with 1 over x squared. But if you multiply b and c, you get 3, right? And from here, you get x squared equals 1 third. And x becomes plus minus 1 over root 3, which can be written as root 3 over 3 with the plus minus sign. I know some folks are asking, why do I write the plus minus sign as the minus plus sign? Because that's uh, how, you, how I'm used to it. I'm used to writing it this way. So it's like my way or highway. Okay, so that's how I write it. But I call it plus minus. I don't really care about the minus plus sign, by the way. But anyways, that's just a personal preference. You may or may not like it. Now, one thing that we have to notice, A, B, C are all positive values. What is that supposed to mean? Well, notice that we're getting like plus minus values here, but are they just free? Like, can they all be negative? Can they all be positive? Can one of them be negative? How do you put those together, right? Here's one thing we need to notice here that x over yz, for example, or y over xc, or z over xy, they're all positive. All positive. Which means that xyz can all be positive, right? X, Y, Z can be all positive. Or, or, two of them will be negative, And one of them will be positive. Because that's also going to give you a positive quotient, right? If you have three negatives, that's not going to work. If you have uh, one negative, it's not going to work. So you have to have an even number of negatives so that you can get a positive answer from all these things. Okay? So one of them is positive, the other two are negative. And let's take a look at some of the uh, order triples that work, and you can definitely write all of them, but I'm not really going to list them all because you get the idea. So root 2 over, uh, what am I talking about? Okay, what is the x value? It is root 3 over 3. Okay, so for example, if I start off with positive root 3 over 3, and now for the y value, I want to use a positive root 6 over 6, and for the z value, I want to use root 2 over 2, this is going to work. As well as another one, like for example, I can go with negative root 3 over 3, negative root 6 over 6, with positive root 2 over 2. This is also going to work. Obviously, we can write more. And 0, 0, 0 is also going to work as a special, well, not so special solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Keep up the good work. Until then, be safe, take care, and hasta la vista.